Greetings and salutations on a magnificent Wednesday afternoon. How's everyone doing? It's the Teddy Bear and welcome to Night Tracks Radio. And today's artist spotlight, singer, songwriter, Lord have mercy, rock and roll hall of famer, and one half of the best selling duo of all time, Hall of Notes. I simply call him the poet. Mr. John Oaks is honoring us today with his new hit single and video, Too Late to Break Your Fall. So on behalf of Night Tracks Radio, it is my privilege to welcome to the show Mr. John Oates. Brother Oates, how are you doing this afternoon? Well, um, I'm doing really well, especially after that beautiful intro. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, it is well-deserved, and thank you so much for joining us today, and I must compliment you. The single, Too Late to Break Your Fall, and video are just wonderful. Now, first and foremost, who came up with the concept of the video? <laughs> good, very good question to start off. But that is, this is my first AI video. Um, we, uh, I, just, I couldn't come up with a concept myself, and I've been reading so much about what's going on with AI and people doing various things. I said, hey, let's see if the computer can make a video for me. And so we threw it out there to a, uh, uh, to a guy who works in AI, and uh, he's, you know, we threw out the lyrics, threw out the vibe of the song, and that's what they came up with. Don't ask me what it's about because I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did what well. I love the video. I love the video. But one of the things that I want to talk about, you being an underrated songwriter, you are an incredible songwriter. And I think a lot of times because of you and Daryl's connection, I think a lot of times your songwriting goes overshadowed and underappreciated. And I call you the poet because just listening to your music on an individual basis and some of the wordplay that you use along with the melody is incredible. And I wanted to ask you, what is it like when you have an opportunity just to share that kind of your self freedom of expression as far as really putting emphasis on your songwriting and also your guitar playing? Oh, thank you. Uh, well, I appreciate you the compliments. Um, you know, it it is one of those things. You know, when you when you're part of a, a you know a group. You know, Daryl and I have been collaborating obviously for years and years and years. And what happens is, you know, your your individual purity of whatever it is that your your um, you know uh, inspiration is usually gets. And I won't say diluted because that's not a good word. But I would say it gets uh, gets compromised in a certain way because you want to you want to bring in the the collective you want to bring in the combination of the influences and that combination influence can be beautiful because it can bring in it can make something totally different than you might have had in your head so when Daryl and I you know were writing together of course there's a lot of power there because you have got two individuals who are both complete complete songwriters on their own but putting their minds and their emotions together to create something new when I'm doing something on my own it is is as it's much more pure statement for me of as to who I am the things I'm feeling the way I, I see the world uh, and that's uh, you know so that's I think what what maybe what you're alluding to you know listening to your music for so many years and loving your music I learned more about John Oates, the songwriter and the person, by actually reading your book, Change oh. of Seasons. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I, <laughs> I learned so much more about you as far as your music and your songwriting being very therapeutic, how it's gotten yeah. you through, through your ups and downs, through your life. And I wanted you to kind of give the listeners out there a little bit more insight on finally bringing your memoir to light and giving people, I guess, a little bit of a more peek or inside look behind the curtain of who John Oates really is. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm very proud of that book, Change of Season. It took me about two years to do it. Um, I had a wonderful uh, collaborator, a guy named Chris Epting, who's written a number of books, and he kind of functioned as my researcher and my, and my editor. Um, but I'll tell you what, it was, it was an interesting, it was an interesting journey to, uh, to do that book because, you know, I wanted to tell my own personal story, but then again, how do I tell my personal story when it's so 
involved and so completely connected to the history of Hall & Oates because, quite frankly, I, I started working with Daryl as a teenager and, you know, went up through adulthood for 50 years. So it's hard to separate yourself from that. But, but what I wanted to do was I, I tr that was my biggest challenge in writing the book. Um, I think I did it because, I, you know, I can't ignore my experience with Hall & Oates. But I, at the same time, I didn't want it to be a book about Hall & Oates without, of course, without Daryl's input. So it was, a, it was a definitely a challenge. Um, I, I, wanted to, uh, I wanted to try, as you said, I wanted to try to give people an insight into who I am as a person and the things that I, you know, that, that moved me, the things that have affected me in my life. And, you know, there's been a lot of things. I mean, it's been a, you know, I, I've had, I've had, ups and downs like everyone does, uh, both in, in professionally and personally. And I wanted to I wanted to get that out there and I wanted to let people know that, you know, I've had to overcome a lot of things and uh and, and find my way. And uh, you know, um, I I am so far so good, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that you that I found so impressive about you, you've always expressed the journey. You know, life is a journey. Yeah. Life is full of experiences. Yes. And I yeah. think you've done a wonderful job. I look at it as, as far as artwork, like a Picasso or Renoir, or have you just painted everything in, in a perfect sympathy as far as sympathy, as far as being able to give people a lot more insight. And I love that you play the acoustic guitar. I get more gratification and satisfaction seeing you play acoustic than actually playing the, the electric guitar. And I want to ask you, how do you feel when you're just on stage with an acoustic guitar and playing? Well, uh, that's interesting. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, you know, my, what I've been doing lately, um, since, you know, Daryl and I haven't been touring very much, I wanted to go out there and I wanted to, you know, with the world being so, you know, uh, so focused on uh, digital and, you know, sampling, uh, all the electronic and the technology and the virtual, the virtual uh, assets that, that people use, even with their cell phones and, and, of course, with making records and music these days, I wanted to go out and break it down to the most essential thing. Thing, which for me was me with an instrument and a song, and and I wanted to, to to see if I could just bring that out into into live performance without any artificial anything, uh, and make it as natural and as organic as possible. And for me, the acoustic guitar works in that context. Um, I think I'm a better acoustic guitar player than I am electric player, but that's you know. I still love playing electric as well, but but when you play acoustic guitar, there's something you know organic about it. It's the wood and the steel and the you know it's it's the thing you hold against your body. There's a there's a thing to it that that really is completely different than having to plug in an electric guitar into an amplifier through a through a cable with power and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. The acoustic guitar is more pure and. For the type of show I'm doing, which is a songs and stories type of show, where I where I tell the tell the backstory on songs and and really uh, kind of describe the inspiration behind songs, the acoustic guitar is just a more appropriate accompaniment. You know, I'm going to take it a step further because I've always thought that when you're playing the acoustic guitar, you build a more intimate rapport with the listening audience. It seems more of like a family atmosphere. It's like a bunch of relatives, family, friends getting together, sitting by the fire, and you're just playing. Yeah. And you're playing something that's coming from inside you that I think a lot of times, as you, as you just stated, the electric guitar doesn't bring. It doesn't bring that kind of intimacy and togetherness. And you always talked about that over your entire, your entire career, bringing that kind of togetherness through music, and we've been through so much over the last couple of years, you know, with the pandemic, losing loved ones, people getting sick, and it's very, and I wanted to ask you from your perspective, how therapeutic is it as far as music, how therapeutic has music been for you through those trying times? Oh, very, very much so. I mean, the pandemic was, uh, you know, was a chance for me to uh, kind of step off the hamster wheel of touring, constantly touring, living in hotels, traveling, traveling. And in being home, at first, I didn't, I, I actually didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know how it would affect me. I didn't know whether it would make me depressed or feel like I was missing out on something. But when it ended up happening, it opened up another world. It opened up a world where I could, where I could, uh, 
could go back into my archives, find instrument, interesting ideas that might have been, you know, lost forever, and and kind of just really here again pick up that acoustic 